On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks get a bounce back win in Memphis, and Mark Cuban has some things to say. Hey, play a game of basketball first, then we can talk. We will on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager at the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every single day. And remember, Locked On Mavs is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On Mavericks. And joining me, as always, my co host, writer, and <laughs> contributor at Mavs.com. Come the Jesus. Twitter beef boy, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? I almost called the computer. I was gonna say, did you almost say the computer? I almost did <laughs> a computer at Mavs. A computer. Um, what a what a, what a weirdly eventful day in Mavs world. That what did what did Donnie Nelson call the Mavs world? Did he say Mavs universe or Mavs world one time? A Tyson uh, Chandler starter kid. <laughs> oh man, I'll never the forget days. that. I'll we, never have, forget that. we have Moses now, so that's a new starter kit. But I mean, it started with Mark on Twitter, Ooh. and then it ended. It ended with a Mavericks, a good Mavericks win, like a win that I was like, I didn't fully stand up at a moment, but I was on the edge of the couch, like, let's go! Like I was getting like a little hyped in this game. I'm like, I don't know why, but it was. It got so tense in the fourth and i think when kp stole it from jaron jackson Mm. after jaron jackson had kind of been crying a little bit whiny (laughs) and he stole it and dunked it on the fast break and he did his like little like i'm gonna put my shoulders out and did his little like unicorn pose he was kind of into it i was like low-key pretty hyped in that moment there was definite moments where we were feeling it and you were saying okay here we go maps finally Finish this one out. There was big moments in this game. Mavs win 104 to 96 against the Memphis Grizzlies. John Morant did not play. Uh, They had a couple guys that that did not play in this game. But this Memphis team coming into this game had not trailed in any game for trailed at all. Not at all. Not even like two zero. They had not trailed for five games. This this Memphis team had really been playing well. They're really tough nosed, like gritty team with Stephen Adams, Dylan Brooks. Desmond Bain, Tyus Jones, like all those guys, DeAnthony Melton, like Xavier Tillman, like all those guys just like push you. And and there's all kinds of physical play. Dylan Brooks even talked about it after the game, how they've been playing so physical. But there was big moments in this game. The one that stood out to me, my big takeaway, Luka Doncic is good. Luka Doncic makes makes big plays. I mean, I'm I'm coming out like hot takes. That's it. End the pot. I'm I'm done. That's my best take I've ever had. Luka plus 18 in this game. Anytime he came in the game, he made something happen. Something uh, went well for the Mavericks. He made big shots. He had five threes that he hit. All five of them, I thought, were in big moments that were that were big for the Mavericks. He had seven assists, and uh, and I just thought that he was anytime that he came in, the Grizzlies didn't have an answer. Yeah, big time game from him. I mean, he played thirty five minutes in this game, but five or ten from three. Uh, some of the threes there, he hit a, c- a couple in a row. He was really feeling it there in the, in the second half. And I, I saw a tweet in the second half, I think in the fourth quarter, when it was just somebody who said very simply, like, Luca, does, you know, Luca's not going to lose this game. Right. And it feels like he has that switch sometimes of, I'm just going to go alpha mode for a little bit and we're going to, I refuse to lose this game. And I mean, I thought Dylan Brooks, uh, I think Dylan Brooks is a, a pretty good, uh, you know, defender. wing defender yeah. and, you know, he gets physical with him. And, and at times Luca just didn't care. I mean, from not just the threes, but there were times, I mean, he was posting up Dylan Brooks doing the fadeaways, just barely hitting the net as it went through. I mean, he was, he was in the Luca bag tonight. Yeah. And he didn't go off for, you know, 38 or 40 or anything like that, but he scored when it mattered. There's a difference between volume scoring and scoring that matters. I think that's the one of the big things that people forget about Dirk is that it wasn't just you know, like Dirk wasn't Kobe where you'd go out there and just score all the time. Like Kobe in those years when they didn't have a good team at all would score a ton of points, but sometimes the points didn't matter. He just kind of went out there and was just scoring, right? Or like a Tracy McGrady type or somebody. You know, should I keep slandering high volume scorers? But Dirk's, it felt like Dirk's points mattered, right? Those are the ones that you go out there and it's a difference between 
you know, when you watch basketball and you just look at a box score and say, oh, this guy scores a lot of points, you know, and, and yeah. Luca's points, I felt like mattered in this game for sure. Um, yeah, but that was, that was the big difference to me is this, that Luca made big plays and it's really nice for Luca to make big plays like that, score eight points in the fourth quarter, especially after Kevin Durant did that to the Mavericks the night before and the Mavericks lost that game. And then Luca can do that to other teams. It's a good reminder that Luca's great and he can do that against teams um, when they need him to. Yeah, and, you know, it looked like I got kind of worried a little bit early on. It looked like he, you know, stepped on, I think, Adams' foot a little early. And it's like, oh, did he, you know, like retweak the ankle a little bit? You know, he was questionable going into this game, still played. It's a the lingering ankle thing. And maybe there was a little bit of added motivation in the game. You know, like we, we know the, the narrative conversation coming out of the Nets game about his weight and – and all of that and the national narrative now that that's happening around it. And maybe it's a little added motivation for him of saying, Hey, like um, we got, we have to win this game. Oh, absolutely. And they were on a three games losing streak. They had lost eight of their last 10 games. I mean, it was just, it was the Mavs were down bad and they needed this game. The Dallas Mavericks needed to win this game. They were coming off of a three game losing streak. The, the Brooklyn game was a really deflating game. And if they had lost this game as well, it just would have taken the Mavericks to an even lower place, I think. And uh, yeah, they needed to. It's one of the reasons why I thought everybody played. You know, John Morant still wasn't playing for the Memphis Grizzlies. They had been playing well, but you look at some of their opponents they've played, they've not been the best teams in the NBA. And so the Mavericks needed to win this one and they got it. And they finally hit some threes. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference in losing to that, you know, that Nets team in that fashion. There's, you know, they're a really good team, but you lose against, you know, Memphis. What I mean, what was it four days ago by now? And mm -hmm. then you come back around, play them again in Memphis. You know, there's a little extra motivation in that too, of like, hey, we gotta get a little bit of revenge there. They kind of embarrassed us on our home floor, and <clears throat> but he went deep into the into the rotation tonight too, even with Luca and KP and everybody playing outside of Willie being out for uh, personal reasons, but Josh Sterling. green. Yeah. Sterling, you know, out for his injury there, but um, Josh green playing over Frank. I thought that was uh, an interesting. I mean, to my knowledge, Frank was available to play in that, but Josh green getting 10 minutes in this game, Moses Brown getting 12 minutes in this game. Uh, <clears throat> Jason Kidd said after the game, he said he thought he pointed out both those guys that they brought, energy to the team to the second unit and you know did they decide the game i i don't i wouldn't go that far but did they help you know give the Mavs some energy heck yeah especially moses brown they needed it on second out of a back-to-back -back, right they needed some guys to run around and to you know be excited and to, to i think they needed more so than their energy even on the court they needed those two guys to cheer for <laughs> like the, the mavericks needed those two guys to get excited about i think as fans a lot of people say we just need something different. I want to see something different. I want to see something else on the court. This this team has been the same for three years, and I'm tired of seeing it. They just want to see somebody else. That's one of the reasons why people keep calling for, oh, Moses Brown needs to play more, and Josh Green. I think they're just bored. They're bored of the team that they've <laughs> seen, and I think the players are too. And so put those guys in. You see them cheering. You see everybody, all the Mavericks were on the bench cheering for those guys and excited when Moses Brown got the blocks and excited when Josh Green hit that jumper, just excited for those guys. And I think they needed that little bit of a boost to get them going in this game. Um, Reggie Bullock was also huge in this game. We'll talk about why Reggie! his threes were massive in this game and what that means for the Mavericks going forward. And of course, Mark Cuban goes off on Mavs Twitter, on Mavs Twitter. <laughs> I'm just here. I'm ready for the Bob versus Mark, like pay-per-view one-on-one. -on -one. What do you, what would you pay? Are you paying? Play a game of basketball first, then we can talk. <laughs> If you, uh, if you need something for your business, Shopify has exactly what you need. In case you don't know, Shopify is a complete commerce platform that lets you start, grow, and manage your business. The subscription-based software allows anyone to set up an online store and sell their products, even if you're selling basketball to people that don't play basketball. Play a game of basketball first, then we can talk. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses like billionaires. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everything. Synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibilities possibility and Shopify helps you make your entrepreneurial dreams come true. Go to shopify.com slash locked on MBA. Make sure that's all lowercase locked on MBA. 
for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA right now. Again, that has to be all lowercase. Shop to shopify.com slash locked on NBA. Also, we want to tell you about our friends at Truebill. Truebill can help you in so many different ways. They can help you Stop paying for subscriptions that you don't want, need, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. If you want to, uh, one of the things that the billionaires do is they save money and they know exactly where to be frugal. And that means not paying for subscriptions you don't want. Truebill can help you do that. Truebill's concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Don't fall for subscription scans, scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now, truebill.com slash locked on NBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. All right, Isaac Harris. Reggie Bullock was the player of the game afterwards. Got to talk to the media, got to talk to, uh, you know, the guys in the booth, Falwell and Harp. Four of six from three. Finally, our guy Reggie, my guy Reggie, Hitting some three-point shots. I have to apologize that you felt that he should have played more. I do think he should play more. <laughs> I do think that. Finally. The spell <laughs> from Nick uh, is is lifted. It's gone now. The curse. <laughs> the curse uh, has been reversed. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie Bullock is back. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully he's back. But no, seriously though, I think I I think we both tweeted out around the same thing that we were both so happy for Reggie. Uh, he just seems like such a good guy, and he is he is a good basketball shooter. He and, is. He really is. Uh, and for him to be in this slump, it's so you know un- uncharacteristic of him. Whatever reason you want to put out there, uh, he did talk about the basketball. He was asked about the ball after the game uh, a little bit. You know, it's so hard for I think it's it's so tricky for players to talk about the the ball because. However, a player talks about it, it's going to come across as like an excuse. An excuse, especially yeah. if the player is struggling. Do- our friend Doyle, Kobe Beef on Twitter, tweeted a, a Tim Hardaway Jr. comment from like early November where he said, "It's not the ball, right? Like the ball's the same. It, it yeah. doesn't matter to us. Just like players trying to get in front of it, saying, hey, you know, it, it's fine. We're, we're, we just got to hit our shots. We just got to do what we got to do so they don't make it an excuse. Yeah, so they're all adjusting to it. I think – all of them will admit that it's different. There's definitely yeah. different parts about this ball compared to the last one, but they're all using it. The ridges, the grooves. <laughs> it's all different. Um, Reggie Bullock had some really interesting comments after the game as well, I thought. Um, he was asked about how do you can how do you keep that confidence? How do you keep that shooter's confidence when he I mean he was down bad. What did we say? He was 25% from three, just not hitting really yeah. well. And how do you just keep shooting? Because he took six more threes in this game after missing six in the game before. And he said, coach is a great coach. He instills a lot of confidence in his players. He's a player's coach. He doesn't care <laughs> if the mf hits the side of the backboard. He did not say mf uh, As long as you've got the confidence to keep, really keep shooting and believing in your shot and in your work ethic. He said, you just got to believe if you're a shooter, you just keep shooting. And that's what Jason Kidd, that, that's the first thing we've learned that Jason Kidd is actually saying to these shooters is, hey, you're a shooter, keep shooting, have confidence. And he was asked how Jason Kidd instills that confidence. And <laughs> Reggie Pollock said, with eye contact during the game. <laughs> I was literally, at- literally just a look from Jason Kidd will instill confidence in players, apparently. <laughs> I was looking up, he, you know, like Nick said, he had four, uh, he had four threes in this game. I was like, hey, I wonder how many times he's hit four threes in a game this season so far. It's only happened one other time. It was back uh, on October 26th. Then I looked at how many times he's hit three threes in a game this season. Only two more times after that. So Oof. there's only been four games this season he's hit three or more threes. I think that number will go up in the near future. Well, also, he's only taking four a game, right? Or a little yeah. more than four a game. So that's, yeah. not, that's not ridiculous. If, you, if he's – yeah, but – I think that number will go up. Hopefully this is when he starts getting in his group. He was a player to start slow, just like him and Dorian were very similar in that they start very slow from three and then eventually they get in their groove during the season. And then you're like, okay, they're, they're in it. Then they're in the pocket and they start hitting. And so hopefully this is the, this is the turnaround game for him. It, may it looks not like be. he's, he's landed his starting spot too. It looks like that's here. To True. Stay for yeah. And I think that that, I think that that Dorian um, Bullock, wing duo is doing great things on defense too. Th- both those guys. Uh, it was Mavs drafted on Twitter that pointed out the Mavs defense in the second half. It was awesome. The Mavs uh, defensive rating in the first half of this game 
was 115. Not good. That's that's a, actually a really bad defensive rating. Yep. But in the second half, the Maver- so for, for the full game, the Mavericks defense rating was 97.8. So you do the math there. Um, try and figure out exactly what their defense rating was in the second half. But it was really good. They held the Grizzlies to uh, a really good number. And I think Dorian and, and Bullock are figuring out how to play together. And Porzingis as well, who's apparently the best rim protector in the NBA, if you ask Anthony Edwards. <laughs> The Anthony Edwards quote about Porzingis is, is incredible. Mind blown. Like, yeah. whoa, that's. I just can't even believe that quote. Um, I mean, Anthony Edwards to Dallas? Are we, have we. But, okay. Anthony Edwards, the rookie for the Timberwolves, uh, after they, after they got destroyed by the, the Jazz, was asked who the best rim protector in the league is. He said, Chris Op Porzingis. Then someone asked him about Rudy Gobert. And he said, anytime I go against Porzingis, I don't get no layups. I don't get I don't get why we couldn't finish on Rudy Gobert. He don't put no fear in my heart. I don't know why. Who? That's an amazing quote. But after he just lost to him. The two yeah, right. The two wings for the Mavs and then Porzingis, I think, being a little bit better on defense this year has helped improve that Mavs defense. Yeah, especially in a game like this. Now let's see what it looks like in another you know, as they continue doing that, because I mean, Reggie's only been starting for four, you know, this is his fifth game starting. So let's see what it looks like, you know, 10 games in him starting. And I thought it looked pretty good against the Nets. There was that one stretch in the fourth quarter where it didn't, but I thought that they looked pretty good defending in, you know, in that, that Brooklyn game as well. Jason Kidd mentioned that as also, they almost yeah. held them to hundred points. There was something that Kidd said in his post game press conference that made me like, it, just, it was just like a, it was a small little sentence that made me think a little bit when he was talking about just how they won this game, the effort, the offense, the efficiency in some of this. And he said, we didn't have to shoot 43s. And it makes me think that like, they're trying to avoid that number, but just how he worded that of like, Hey, we, you know, we won this game and we didn't have to shoot, you know, 43s. They shot 33 in this game. And it's like, it's kind of wild that mindset of, because, you know, over these past years, we've just seen teams try to lean past that number, you know, and especially the past, you know, a few seasons in Dallas of like, hey, we're going to jack the threes up. And just that I just caught how he said that of it seems like they're trying to, you know, avoid shooting a lot of threes just like in their game plan of like, oh, well, we won this game. We didn't even have to shoot the 43s in that. So I, I don't know. It could be nothing. It could just me being weird, but. Yeah, no, it, it was interesting that the Mavericks could could get some penetration. They could actually get some stuff going or sort of around the rim, but a lot a lot of a mid-range as well. And they didn't have to take that that number of threes and they could still they they hit more threes than they did when they took 46 the other, <laughs> other night. So yeah. you'll take that for sure. And this is a positive world. <laughs> we're just gonna stay positive about should, it. Should should Willie ever play over Moses again? Ooh, let's talk about Moses. Moses Brown in this game, we talked about how he had positive minutes, but um, nine points for him, seven boards, four offensive rebounds. He had two blocks, both of them on jump shots. One of them on Jaron Jackson Jr.'s jumper, which was was awesome because his release point's pretty high. And uh, he's seven of eight from the free throw line. No, Willie should not play again. Just, just the energy that Moses brings. Now, let's not overreact and say Moses should, you know, is the clear-cut starting center and he's the answer to all the Mavericks center problems and, his defense was was bad in this game at times. Outside of the blocks, his defense was not good. His pick and roll defense was not good, and he still has a long way to go as a roller to the rim. There's still just something that maybe it's an aggressiveness, maybe it's a chemistry with the ball handler, but there's something that he's not getting with either Luca or Brunson to get to like to, just to get to the rim. Um, it just seems tentative to me. But the defense especially stood out as okay. He did some really good things. It was positive. There were good minutes. It, it brought energy to the Mavericks, but. If you want to go any farther, that defense has to improve. Yeah, he, he's a little clumsy uh, when he gets in. But you just almost have to accept it. Like, hey, right. fun energy. Not everybody plays hard. He plays hard, kind of like the Dwight Powell type of thing. And it's it's kind of – he's a – you know, we've talked about the high school running back thing so many times of, like, there's some players in the league that you have him and then you just unleash him on the court and you know they're going to try really hard – and there's going to be some plays that you're like, holy crap, you just out-hustled everyone. But then there's going to be some like, what were you doing type <laughs> plays. And that's kind of like Moses a little bit. A little heavy-footed, closing out, kind of you know, pick it up, pick and roll. But but I'll take that right now. Exactly. They, they need some type of bolt of energy, and that's what he gave them. I'll take a couple of amazing blocks and then a couple of bad defensive plays over the defense that Dwight Powell gave him in this game. 
Dwight uh, Powell was, was brutal defensively in this game. <sighs> Dwight was uh, one of four. He had five rebounds, two this points. This is where Isaac tries to say the other stats from Dwight Powell instead of talking about. When, uh, Memphis, when Memphis took their 12-point lead, the Mavericks were three of 15 from three in the second quarter. And uh, I just wrote, Dwight is killing them on defense. That was my big takeaway in that in that spot. But uh, yeah. coming up, let's get into Mark- Desmond Bain's game. Oh, let's, oh let's, no. Oh, I didn't, we didn't hear from Desmond Bain like at all in this game. He had 14 points. It's just, I mean, down the street, I can't believe he didn't shoot better. <laughs> we'll talk about Mark Cuban's going off on, Mark Cuban going off on Mavs Twitter, shooting the basketball, all kinds of stuff. We'll break it down. We'll talk about it coming up but before we do let me tell you about stance let me tell you about stance founded in 2009 stance apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks underwear and athletic active apparel with a sharp focus on comfort quality and creativity it brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression because of everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. Isaac, what do you love about Stance? Man, I've had multiple pairs of Stance socks over the years when Nick told me, hey, we're gonna, we are gonna have this uh, new sponsor, Stance. I was like, let's go. I love Stance. And I, I've had some different, like, cool design Stance socks as far as, like, some NBA-style socks. But then they have some actual, like, fashion socks, too, that I've bought to wear with some nicer clothes. And I just love the comfort of them. There's a difference when you have, like, a generic sock they are like, all right, you just have to have socks on. And then you put on that pair of socks, that stance pair of socks. They're like, well, dang, mm-hmm. these are actually comfortable. I might wear these around the house type of socks. That's what stance gives you. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in. That those who feel good do good. Go see for yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use the promo code Locked On to get 15% off. Stance.com at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. Are they sending us something? I'm, I'm down for that. All right, Isaac Harris. Mark Sign Cuban took to Twitter a useless platform when he wanted to talk about uh, what was happening with the Dallas Mavericks. He first started with talking about the uh, three-point shooting. He said, so I was curious to compare three-point shooting this year versus last year. So he took to basketball reference. He knows how to use it. For the top 20 three-point attempts this season, I'm thinking he's doing for players. Um, yeah, for, for players for players this year. For the top 20 three-point attempts last year, uh, last year, 38.6% from the top three-point a game shooters last year this year 35 percent. so the highest volume three-point percentage shooters this year are shooting three and a half percentage points worse than they were last year he said the crazy thing is this year 11 of the 20 so 11 of the top 20 volume three-point shooters are under 30 35 percent from three that's bad that's below average and if you're shooting a ton of them that's really bad last year only two players we're shooting below average in the in those players that were the top, you know, highest shooting three point shooters, and one is above forty percent this year. So he goes on to that and he talks about how if you go to the top fifty of three point shooters last year, only one player shot under thirty four percent. This year, seventeen players are shooting under thirty four percent. His whole point was just that three point shooting is down. We've we've said that he's just putting numbers to it, uh, and he said he he ended that by saying, "I think we are still adjusting to the new ball." We've thrown around this new ball thing every once in a while. Isaac, what's your take on the new ball? Well, it's definitely affecting people. I don't don't think you can deny that. Like shooting across the board is down. But I think it's down for a handful of reasons. And, you know, him and Bob went back and forth on Twitter, which just gave, I mean, everybody was the meme of the guy kicking back, throwing, you know, with a bucket of popcorn. It's like, let's see where this thing goes. And exactly that right there. If you watch on YouTube, but everybody has their different opinions though. And no one knows like, this, I mean, this is an, <laughs> this is an age old, you know, argument here, but like everybody has different opinion on something that they're, you don't know the exact right answer to. For instance, we've heard Bob on another podcast, give his whole like spill on it. He thinks a lot of it has to do with fans being back in the arena that that's why three point, you know, percentages are down across the league. Mark obviously has, you know, thinks a lot has to do with the ball and how it's affecting different shooters and stuff. 
even you know their big exchange came off a Bob Twitter, you know, a Bob tweet today. Uh, basically, this, this is Bob is Haralla Bob Bulgaris. He was the former like analytics guy yeah. that Cuban the Cuban brought in and hired, and then was the guy that you know Lucas screamed at in that game that became a whole thing, and then Rick Carlisle and lineups and all that kind of stuff. If you remember Haralla Bob Bulgaris, that's Bob. Yeah, so so Bob he he likes you know to tweet about negative math stuff, and you you know understand that. <laughs> And so he tweeted out, Bob saying on Twitter, Mavs, for instance, are largely getting different types of threes than they have in years past. If your main role in offense was historically to stand beyond the three-point line and take corner, catch and shoot threes, and now you're cutting screen. So he's obviously talking about Bullock in this of saying, hey, I think it looks like he's saying, it looks like Bullock's shooting percentage is down because his roles change. He's not just a catch and shoot three-point shooter. Now he's moving, cutting, and doing all this stuff. And that's where Mark Cuban came in and was like, all right, well, you know, we track stuff in practice and all this thing, you know, catch and shoot and practice. And it, it's, it's huge back and forth. It just goes to show you, everyone has their opinion on like why shooting's down this year. No one I'm, knows. No one knows yeah. for sure. And you can't, you, there's no way to prove it, right? Like, the, I mean, I get like, hey, let's just empty the arenas and keep this, you know, new ball or let's, it, so. Go well, so, the- so Mark Cuban's response was just that, basically. He said, you know we track shooting when guys are by themselves in the gym, right? You know we have those numbers, right? This year, prior years. And there are never any fans in the gym when they're shooting. You remember that, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, how many times can you say right question mark in its week? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he says that they do track the numbers when guys are at practice and there's no fans in there. And I'm assuming that he's saying that the numbers are down there as well. And so that's another point in his direction of saying, what's the ball? The ball is is different. Uh, Reggie Bullock, we mentioned earlier, Reggie Bullock was asked about the ball and said, yeah, it was an adjustment. He admitted that it was an adjustment for him. He'd been shooting that same ball. I think he said for eight years, uh, which is probably his NBA career before, you know, he was playing at North Carolina. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, I laughed about it when I seen that back and forth because obviously Mark leans towards that. And even Mark said on Twitter, he's like, Hey, it's going to affect, and this is, isn't like, you know, groundbreaking science either. It's going to affect different players different, right? Like there's some players. I mean, if we're going to the, the small, smaller scales here, if some of you listing play ball in high school, or you played some pickup ball and there's some guys that you're, you're going to play pickup ball with, and you're going to get the ball that like no one wants to play with on the outdoor court that has no grip. That's uh, super slick, but it's the only ball out there yep. that you can play with. And you're like, either we're not playing at all. And we're just packing up, rolling out to Taco Bell, or we're going to get some, we're going to get some run in. There's still some guys out there that are going to actually play really well because it doesn't matter. There's some of their shots. It doesn't matter. Like they're going to, they can do that. But there's some guys like, like me, I can't shoot where crap. If there's no grip on the ball, just how like my form is and all this stuff. But there's some guys who can shoot it no matter what you and Reggie Bullock, both. No, so it's it's just I know that's a dumb small small example, but it just, it's going to affect some players differently. But it's the same for everybody. My whole thing with like kind of what Mark's going for is, well, the balls changed for everyone. Shooting's down across the board, but we're like one of the worst of the worst. So like, there's yeah. still there's not a Mavs equi- you know thing in this of well, this is why the Mavericks are struggling shooting. Well, everybody's struggling, but you're still one of the worst of everyone struggling right now. If the Mavs stayed their same rank in the NBA in three-point shooting, then you would say, okay, okay. So the, their their percentage is down, and but the rest of the league is down. But it's not the proportionate percentage that's down for the Mavs. It's down for the rest of the league, right? The Mavs yeah. are are shooting worse than most of the other teams are shooting worse than they were last year. If that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> if I said that sentence right. Um, so, yeah. So then Haral Bob brings that point up, and then Mark Cuban says – uh, our favorite quote of the exchange, I think, which is play a game of basketball first, then we can talk. <laughs> he said, play a game Incredible. of basketball first, then we can talk. Uh, talks about the impact of different balls and all that kind of stuff. And then the quote that's being talked about the most, which I think is the the probably the least relevant, but we'll bring it up. Um, he talks about how people, you know, Mark Cuban had a bunch of fans come in and obviously they were angry. This was after the Nets loss and fans were down bad. They're upset. A lot of people blame Mark Cuban because of his decision-making. And he said, you know, talks about how NBA Twitter is toxic and useless. He said, NBA Twitter is the furthest you can get from our real fan base. Twitter is the absolute worst platform to try and engage with fans. Only thing worse than NBA Twitter is uh, like Bitcoin Maxis, which I guess is a platform that people talk about Bitcoin on, which sounds like a thing I do not want to be part of. But I guess I'm I'm old, I guess, if I don't know what that is. Can I tell you what I think he meant by this? 
Bitcoin. <laughs> this whole thing about top, bringing up specifically NBA Twitter, calling it toxic and useless, talking about how it's not our real fan base and bringing that up. Show me the lot. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. What was the conversation you and I had yesterday, the national media had yesterday, that everybody on Mavs Twitter was talking about? Lucas Wait. Yeah. We were all talking about Lucas Wait. We were all talking about how it how it affected him and how he needed to get better and needed to get in shape. And okay, well, now he's whining way more than before. And just all, all of a sudden, people are piling on Luca and all that. In comes Mark Cuban with the distraction of, of the year to talk about, okay, let me think of something to come in here and just say that all of a sudden Mavs Twitter will forget everything about Luca and get over that conversation. The news cycle will move on and I'll just come in and honestly use a Trump tactic and say something completely, completely different so that everyone gets hooked on that. And what does Mavs Twitter care about more than anything else? We're both on it. We, we understand this. Mavs Twitter cares about themselves and cares about that. And so when Mark Cuban says it's toxic and useless, furthest from the fan base, the worst platform to engage on, all of a sudden he gave all these people uh, a lot to work with. And he, and he got ratioed for that last one on Twitter. Are you and discrediting me? Even I came in and was like, I don't know, man. I, I, Twitter is maybe the best platform to, to talk about because I, I've been in lots of Reddit conversations and Facebook conversations and some YouTube comments on, on highlight videos and things. And not our YouTube comments. Obviously, our YouTube comments are the best. but Incredible. Instagram comments are always like not about the post that it's about, not about any. It's like, oh, LeBron is better than Jordan. I'm like, okay, well, this is a post about a Moses Brown dunk. I don't understand what this First is like. About. And yeah, so, but I think Mark Cuban used all of this as a distraction and I think it worked. Clever. No, you said that, you know, tonight I was like, it's a good point. I mean, honestly, I, I could believe that. I mean, deep down, we won't know whether that's true or not, but it's like, I mean, it achieved it. I think people are going to still talk about it. I mean, I honestly think a lot of what he said about Matt, uh, about Twitter in general, NBA Twitter, he used the hashtag to NBA Twitter. Oh, uh, right, twice. He used it three times. Yeah, I honestly think a lot of it is true. I agree with it. The only thing I don't agree with is the it's useless. I don't think it's useless. I think it's kind of useless for a guy to his platform. But, I mean, even for like some you know guys like us, like our pod probably wouldn't be what it is if we Correct. didn't get to promote it and interact with a lot of people on Twitter. Now, have I – found that twitter has become more and more toxic over the years yeah yeah i think well, so. the, the bigger a following you get the more i think the more hate you get and stuff like that you have to for sure yeah so, i don't want to i don't want to have a whole conversation about is twitter good is twitter not well i just think that i think internet as a whole i think people want to come at cuban on that of like oh you just don't even want to like you're mute fans you don't want to have talk with fans all that stuff i think there's a healthy balance of that because the portion of internet reddit twitter anything it lacks accountability at times because sure. there, so many people can just put a cartoon in their, you know, not even their name. There's no accountability for it. So, and the, I, uh, the irony about that is that what Mavs fans are saying right now in, you know, Kirk's group therapy, we check in there every once in a while just to see what people are saying. And they're all saying that Cuban doesn't get held accountable and that they should help hold Cuban accountable. And so Cuban's like, well, we hate Mavs Twitter because you can't hold anybody accountable. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's the same going back and forth. Like both sides are pointing at each other saying, well, you can't be held accountable because you can say whatever you want with anonymity and an anonymity because you're on Twitter. And then they're like, well, you're the owner and who's going to hold you accountable. And you need to be held accountable for this awful trash roster and it, all that. It is of. something to remember too, that whatever, whatever social bubble that you're in, there's been so many people that have DM'd us over the years trying to get in contact with us. And we're yeah. like, Hey, Twitter is the best way to do it. And it's like, or they're you email us and like, all right, we'll create create a Twitter just to talk to you guys. There's somebody who came up to us at the game I mean, the other night. Like probably honest, honestly, like 50 people over the last Yeah. And it's like a guy came up to us a game on you know against the Nets on Tuesday night, took a picture with us and said, dude, I you know, he tweeted us, I haven't been on Twitter in six years. So it's just a reminder of whatever social platform that you're on, it is a there it, it's a portion of the fan base. Mavs Twitter is a, a portion of the fan base. There's a whole group of Mavs fans that are not even on Mavs Twitter. So it, I get trapped in this too of Instagram saying this or Mavs or Twitter is saying this or whatever it is. And it's like, it's, it's just a reminder to us that, Hey, it's, these are portions of fan base. It's not the entire fan base. And it's weird because in all the things Cuban said, like, I think the Twitter com I think the Twitter things he said was just a distraction to get everybody to stop talking about Luca and Luca's weight. The three-point shooting stuff, 
I don't know. Do I agree with it? Sure. Do I think it's the only problem? No. But did he say that? No, he also didn't say that either. So I know people are coming down hard on our Mark Cuban today, but I kind of agree. If, kind of, if he kind used of it, what he said, if he used it to take away from Luca, then brilliant move because then just the like, Twitter stuff, the three point stuff, I think he actually believes and wanted to, maybe that's to take away from some of the, the hate that Reggie Bullock and Tim Hardaway Jr. And guys were, were getting. Yeah. And even he, he said on there in response to somebody's tweet about him and Bob, he's like, dude, we, we talk crap to each other all the time. So I, it's, yeah, I think it it's off putting to some people like lower people like us, because it's kind of like the Kevin Durant stuff in a way you're like, well, why, you know, why are you engaging, you know, and saying all this stuff? You don't have to do that. But I understand when Kevin Durant says too, well, why can't I, I'm a human being too. Like, why, why are you putting rules on me that I can't? And I'm like, touche. Like I, I can't like, I, <laughs> it may, you know, so to each his own, like it was entertaining at least. It had me on Twitter more today than uh, I've tried to. <laughs> I've tried to stay off of it, you know, during the days a lot now, and uh, I was on it more today than uh, I have in a week. If he came on and started saying stuff about, well, you know, the centers are great, and the you know the Mavericks defense is this, and Jason Kidd's doing a great job, and like all that kind of stuff, I would, I'd be more skeptical. But he only focused on just the three point shooting, which it's down. The numbers say it, so it is what it is. Yeah. The that's trades we've made point. have been perfect. You know, like if he started to say all that kind of stuff, I'd be okay, like, oh, that, that's, that's yeah, different. I don't know about that one. <laughs> it, it, the logic about the balls, though, my only issue with that is, you know, when it, it seems like it, he's trying to take up for the Mavs sucking at shooting the basketball. It's like, oh, the ball's yeah. the ball. And it's like, and it goes back to the point I was saying. It's like, all right, yeah, they have sucked at shooting, but like, you the whole league sucked at shooting you can't just point at the league well the whole league sucked at shooting too it's like okay yeah but you you're the worst of the worst one of the worst teams so it's not the only reason for sure no i think it's a collection of reasons and everybody's just going to argue in a circle for why they think the shooting's down it's part of it there you go that's what mark cuban said on twitter guys we are going to be back uh tomorrow with the guests uh, we'll be, yeah, well, so the, the pod's going to be a little bit delayed. I know we drop it normally at, you know, midnight, late at night. Um, so you'll have it for your commute on Friday morning. This one will be a little bit, um, delayed. So you won't have it for your commute, commute to work on Friday, but you'll have it for your commute on, uh, on your way home from Friday, or maybe even on your lunch break as uh, we're bringing back a guest that will, uh, I'll be recording with on Friday morning. Yeah, so that pod will be a little bit later. However, we will still also do a post game. Isaac and I will both be on that one since it's the Rick Carlisle Luka Doncic Bowl, and we'll uh, we'll have that one. Hopefully, Haralba will be courtside. That would be the ultimate ultimate troll move, I think. That'd be hilarious if he's just sitting there. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back for both those pods coming up over the weekend. And then we'll be back Monday, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On Maps. Go make your second listen, Locked On Bets with your boy Q. Great stuff, insight, analysis from Lee Sterling. Go listen to Locked On Bets, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On Maps. Peace out. Boom.